from the Coin Center in downtown Portland. This is Coin 6 News. Watching out for you. Merry Christmas and Happy Hanukkah to all. Thanks for joining us this evening. This is Coin 6 News at 11. I'm Andrew Dimbert. Well, in early December, a Corbett couple lost everything to a fire, including their Christmas gifts for their family. But when the people in the community heard about this tragedy, they sprung into action. Our Jennifer Dowling is here now with their story of giving back this Christmas. Jennifer. Well, good evening, Andrew. The Lisi's have been spending some of their nights living out of a garage on the property as they try to navigate their insurance policy claims. They were devastated at the loss of $700 worth of Christmas food and gifts spent on their grandson. And then Holly stepped in. It just went up like a matchstick. Caroline Lisi says on December 10th, she went out to collect wood, lighting an oil lamp on the porch to guide the way at their rural Larch Mountain home. And I heard a pop. And I looked up and the porch is on fire. She ran inside to wake husband oh, Harley yeah. and grabbed their turtle Diamond, who yes, was sleeping next to him on a blanket. Then she grabbed her purse. There was no time for anything else. He didn't even have shoes on his feet. When fire crews made it up the icy mountain road. It was gone by the time they even got up there. The couple had just moved to Corbett three months earlier and didn't know anyone. But that didn't stop the residents there from finding them. Such a pleasure to meet you. The couple never imagined a stranger, Holly McCowan, and the community of Corbett would come together just for them. So many people had so many things to offer. On Christmas and Eve, Holly and her daughter Mallory brought some of the donations over to the couple's daughter's apartment. Uh, I was in charge of was recreating the Christmas things that you lost. For everyone to help, it's just, I, I'm overly thankful. Holly says people have been giving money, cat food, gift cards, furniture, storage space, and clothes. Shoes and boots, thank you so much. Gas for the generator. Though they lost two cats, one did survive, along with Diamond, who was decked out with glitter for the holidays and ready for visitors. A brave That's little soul. <laughs> I'll put a whole bunch of glitter on her. The Lisi say they're grateful for what they do have and can't thank the community enough for helping to restore what was lost. Thank you, guys. And thank you for all your support that's coming and all the support and that dry storage, all of you. And I will definitely be paying it forward. I yes, will. We you thank will. you very much. And Holly says someone in the community has also secured a fifth wheel for the couple so they can stay at their property while they rebuild. They're currently in the process of finding someone to help get it up the hill because they live off an icy road. Back to you. Right, thank you, Jennifer. More than 60 people living in homeless camps received warm clothes and other necessities during the Under the Bridge Walk on Christmas Eve. A group of volunteers from the Portland Houseless Support Coalition and Right to Dream 2 joined forces to walk the streets of Portland, handing out warm clothes and other items. Houseless advocate Vahid Brown says this year they gave away seven truckloads full of donations to those in need. Yeah, I think the needs are greater. The needs are increasing. Houselessness is increasing. Uh, there are greater numbers of people on the street. Uh, we're coming back to the to R2D2 empty-handed tonight, which is not always the case on Under the Bridges walks. Now, Brown says some of the items that were given away include hand warmers, gloves, warm hats, sleeping bags, and backpacks. The coalition will be collecting more items through January. The officer elves in Beaverton were back at it again today, delivering toys to kids who might not otherwise have gifts for the, uh, under the tree for Christmas. Merry Christmas. So Santa is stuck on the other side of the world right now. This was the second year for a blue Christmas in Beaverton. The police department adopted 48 local families, including 108 children. Both on and off duty officers helped to deliver the gifts to kids at their homes and local shelters. Makes me feel pretty cool. Like it's nice to be able to help other people. It's something that we just we really thought was fun um, when we did it last year. So we made it a little bit bigger this year. The gifts were purchased by officers, city employees, and members of the community. Volunteers wrapped the gifts and prepped them for Christmas delivery. Well, Joseph, this is exactly what Christmas is all about, just giving back. Yeah, it sure is. And what a wonderful day to do that. Uh, we had a lot of sunshine across the whole Pacific Northwest. Now we're watching for some more fog to develop as we head into the overnight. I'll take you out to Riverside, uh, Riverview, rather, uh, Community Bank camera in Vancouver. It started off foggy. Here's the afternoon. Great 
Great holiday. Look at that topping off in the 40s. Now we're going to watch these temperatures kind of drop a little bit and we're going to watch out for a little bit of fog. It's already out there for a couple locations, areas like Hillsborough, Cornelius, Forest Grove, pushing up towards Scappoos, uh, where the visibility right now is low and it will be uh, likely through the overnight. Here comes a wave of clouds that moved on in, didn't bring any moisture along with it as far as uh, rain or snow, but we do have another system off to the northwest that will eventually push on through as we get into our Monday and that's going to bring the rain and that's definitely going to bring a little bit of snowfall. So my full forecast coming up in just a couple minutes. We do have more winter weather. I'm going to time that out for you, let you know where exactly we'll see the snowfall and the rain. And that's just coming up in a few minutes, so keep it right here. Andrew? All right, thank you, Joseph. Caught on camera, a tense situation inside a Washington mall when a man pulls out a knife on last-minute Christmas shoppers. According to Linwood Police, the victim in his 30s, stepped in between two other men in their late teens that were fighting. Now, one of those teens stabbed that man. Then both teens tried to run but were immediately taken down by mall security and bystanders. I see a guy reaching in his waistband and everyone was just screaming. And I thought he was going to pull out a gun at first. Now, unfortunate, uh, fortunately, that victim is okay. And we now know the identity of the elderly woman who died yesterday after rear-ending a TriMet bus in northeast Portland. She is 88-year-old Jean Lincoln. Now, her son was also in the car but only had minor injuries. Investigators believe she may have applied the gas instead of the brakes before crashing into the back of the stopped TriMet bus. Lincoln's death is the 42nd traffic fatality in the city of Portland in 2016. And sadly, the 43rd fatality wasn't far behind. A Christmas tragedy overnight. A 16-year-old is dead and three other teens are in the hospital after a crash on Mount Scott Boulevard. The teens were traveling from Happy Valley after an evening of singing Christmas carols with members of a Southeast Portland church. It looks as though the car missed a sharp turn, sending them off the roadway. And another man is dead in a crash on Highway 30 near Astoria. Investigators say two cars got into a minor crash because of icy roads. And when the drivers got out to survey the damage, a third car lost control, killing one of those drivers. OSP is investigating. And on now to another wreck. A car slams into the side of a Dairy Queen in Salem. Crews helped the driver who was trapped inside the car. He's now recovering in a hospital tonight. A magnitude 7.6 earthquake hit Chile's southern coast and causes some damage. Now, fortunately, though, no deaths have been reported, and the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center says the tsunami threat has ended. A tragedy in Russia this Christmas Day. A Russian military jet carrying 92 people crashed into the Black Sea just after takeoff. No survivors have been found. CBS News correspondent Wendy Gillette reports. Search teams scoured the Black Sea Sunday, looking for debris and victims after a plane operated by the Russian military crashed two minutes after takeoff Sunday morning. The Soviet-built plane belonged to the Defense Ministry. Its flight had originated in Moscow and refueled in the southern Russian city of Sochi before taking off for Syria. All 84 passengers and eight crew members on board are feared dead. The passengers included 64 members of the Alexandrov Ensemble. The official choir of the Russian military, which has given performances around the world. The choir was scheduled to perform for Russian troops in Syria on New Year's Eve. Outside the group's headquarters in Moscow, mourners left flowers in tribute. Search teams found parts of the plane about a mile from shore. They have also recovered a number of bodies. Their work will continue around the clock. Russia's transport minister says investigators are looking into all possible causes of the crash, including terrorism. The plane took off in good weather. Russian President Vladimir Putin expressed his condolences to families of the victims and called for a national day of mourning on Monday. Wendy Gillette for CBS News. Nine Russian journalists and a well-known Russian humanitarian and doctor were also on board the plane. Well, after the break, a World War II vet parties like it's 99. Keep it locked to Coin6 News.
What a week it's been for one Hillsboro man, part of the greatest generation. World War II veteran Jack Hardy just turned 99, and he's celebrating like never before. Tim Becker has Jack's big day. I guess I'm getting to be kind of last of the few. This is Jack. He's just an amazing man. Every day he amazes us. And this video clip is just one of thousands of messages and birthday cards flooding the internet and his home from, well... All over the world. All over the world. Yep, we've had people from Europe thanking him for his service and his part in freedom. Jack's 99th birthday... Today's the day, and he's got thousands of cards. ...was nothing like any others before. And salute. Filled with reverence, respect... Happy birthday to you. ...and a lot of love. Blow him out, Dad. Yeah. It's all about Jack, and he just knows people do care, and he's not alone. Thanks for everything you did. You were an inspiration to all of us. I time, too, but there was... Many of his mother and you boys just doing the same thing. He began his day visiting with soldiers from Fort Lewis, who delivered a medal from a colonel that read about Jack on the Internet. Same postings that brought in cards and messages from places like Belgium and Switzerland, and even a singing YouTube greeting. Happy birthday, dear Jack. From Public School 229 in Queens, New York. All for the 99-year-old birthday boy who boasts about his two younger sisters, also in their 90s. All three of us still have our marbles. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. He's just an amazing man. He deserves everything he gets. Oh, he Tim Becker, Coin6 News. It's Christmas Day for millions of Christians around the world. The Pope delivered his traditional Christmas Day message, making a passionate plea for peace in war-torn areas around the world. He told Israelis and Palestinians to abandon hate and revenge, and for Iraq, Libya, and Yemen to end their brutal wars. Pope Francis also called for peace in Nigeria and South Sudan, and that Colombia and Venezuela should stay on a course of reconciliation. The Duke. Can his words make a difference? I hope so. Um, but I also think that maybe the people here believe in that message, so not necessarily the people that need to be hearing that message are listening. People seem to listen to him carefully, and I really admire him, and I, I believe he has something to offer for the world. Said S the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge attended a Christmas Day church service at St. Mark's Church in Berkshire. A heavy cold kept Queen Elizabeth from attending the traditional Christmas morning service. Now, that's incredibly rare for the Queen to miss this service because it's a cornerstone of the royal family's Christmas celebrations. It also brings the monarch into contact with local residents who gather outside for a glimpse at royalty. While back in the U.S., the President and the First Lady wished all Americans a Merry Christmas and happy holidays. One of the best parts of the holiday season is spending time with the special people in your life. And for me, that means getting some help from my best friend for our annual Christmas Weekly Address. Now, given how our first Christmas Weekly Address went, I realized that Barack needed all the help he could get. <laughs> this is our first Christmas in the White House, and we what? Stop! Uh, what? You know what? You've got to stop it. All right, you got to get it together. You're gonna have to pull it together, POTUS. <laughs> They reflected on the honor of serving the American people as president and first lady over the past eight years and the progress that's been made. The president and the first lady recognized our troops as well and their families for their service, and they're encouraging everyone to visit joiningforces.gov to find out how to support military families in your community. Okay, let's check back in with Joseph Dames for a full holiday forecast. Joseph, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Uh, Merry Christmas to everyone. I, I, I don't know if you saw earlier, it had this awesome tie. It had Santa Claus on it. Yeah, it lights up banking. and everything, too. Good stuff. Green tie, though, so I can't take it over to the wall, but I was tempted. The green screen. You can't have green. You can't wear green, green on the green screen. screen. So I might, I might bring it back to the desk here in just one second. Let's talk about the weather, though. We do have uh, a little bit of fog going on through the overnight. We have high pressure exiting. And we're going to have our next system approaching us as we go into our Monday. I hope you had a wonderful day. It really was a nice finish to our weekend. Uh, we have
have this line of cloud coverage moving in, kind of a weak disturbance. It's not bringing precipitation along with it. It's what's behind it well into the Pacific that's going to move in tomorrow afternoon, and that's what's going to bring the moisture on in. So you can see the cloud coverage already. This is a satellite. Uh, look at that, and it's moving to the east, and it's going to get here a little bit of precipitation there, but uh, really not much going on. How about this colossal storm off to the northeast, bringing thunderstorms for Christmas through areas of Nebraska as well as Iowa, and then behind it, the wraparound snow as the cold air infiltrates from the north. So that has a big, massive system that we didn't really have to deal with for today. I'll take you out to Western Oregon. It started off foggy. This is the big tree that they light up. You can see that we had some sunshine for the afternoon. Wonderful. And then now, Lighting back up, you can see the fog kind of settling in, and a lot of us uh, might see a little bit of fog as we head into the overnight. Current temperatures right around 34 degrees right now in Portland, a breeze southeast right around 8 miles per hour. It feels more like 27 out there, so it's definitely feeling a little bit like winter at this time. Waking up tomorrow morning, I expect the cloud coverage to kind of stick around. Uh, we'll stay dry for the morning hours, so if you have any plans to get outside, get anything done that you don't want to be in the rain about, uh, do it early in the day and then maybe towards midday, because by the time we get into the afternoon, Noon, our big system rolls on through, and that's going to bring in the precipitation. So this is how it's all going to time out. Here's our Monday. We're going to have coast. Uh, you folks are going to see the rain right around midday, maybe a little bit before that. Definitely the cloud coverage. We shouldn't see the rain till the afternoon here, somewhere around three o'clock, maybe a little bit earlier than that. And that's going to bring winter weather for the Cascades and Gorge. By the time we get into the evening hours, I'm expecting snow for the mountains. They can pick up a decent amount through the gorge too, maybe approximately about two inches for areas of the gorge. So that's going to make the roads a little tricky on I-84. And then by the time we get into Tuesday, still expecting some ongoing rain and winter snow. I'll show you here. Here's what we have going on through the overnight. The clouds kind of fill in. Maybe a little bit of sunshine tomorrow morning, especially east of the Cascades. Folks in the Dalles, Pendleton, you'll have a nice day. Madras, too. Uh, but here's the rain. It starts right around midday towards Astoria. Really makes it into the valley by the time we get towards the afternoon. Here's 5 o'clock. Expect some uh, wet roads here. Still pretty dry off to the east, but watch the snow kind of move on in through the gorge. And it also fills through the Cascades with the cold air aloft and that's going to bring the snowfall as we head into the evening rain showers on and off through the overnight Monday and into Tuesday morning. Here's Tuesday morning. It's still wet out there, still pretty snowy. So if you're going to be back out for the new week, uh, watch out for those roads. They're going to definitely be a little risky, a little wet and slick as we go into our Tuesday too. So it's going to be a kind of a wet start to the week. We do have some winter weather again. We have a winter storm watch two to four inches through the I-84 Gorge area and pretty much the whole Cascades could maybe pick up a couple feet. So if you're going to be out uh, doing some skiing, it's going to be great for the ski reports. I'll take you to the seven day forecast real quick. Uh, we do have have temperatures in the 40s on Tuesday too, about 46 degrees, 44 on Wednesday, and uh, by the time we get into Thursday, 45 degrees. So uh, we do have a little bit of wet uh, days out there, but we'll have some dry time too, I think, on uh, Wednesday, likely Thursday and Saturday. Now, I was looking forward to this forecast, but what I was looking forward to even more this is this tie. Tie. <laughs> I couldn't wear, but it blinks. It's a great tie. I like so, to thank my aunt for this. What happens if you do wear green on the green screen? Do you it, just disappear? It just goes straight through. You'd <laughs> see the temperatures and everything right through it, but you wouldn't miss that Santa Claus blinking, whatever. Yeah, so you got to I mean, wear that tonight tie. then, right after you get right off. Right after I get off. Okay. Merry Christmas, All right. everyone. Thank you, Joseph. Yeah. Well, we're following up now on Star Wars actress Carrie Fisher's health. According to a tweet from her mom, Fisher is now in stable condition, but she's still in the hospital. Fisher suffered a cardiac event on a flight from London to Los Angeles Friday. Fisher played the role of Princess Leia in Star Wars, but she's also known for other movies and plays as well, and writing a number of best-selling books. Well, 2016 takes another music icon from us. British pop star George Michael has died. The Grammy Award-winning singer from Wham! and solo artist was 53 years old. Chris Martinez reports from L.A. George Michael soared to stardom in the British band Wham! He formed as a teenager in 1982 with friend Andrew Ridgely. The son of a Greek immigrant was best known through the 80s and 90s for his twist on post-disco dance pop. His first solo single, Careless Whisper, debuted in 1984, shortly before Wham! split up. But I gotta think twice. Three years later, his first solo album called Faith went on to sell more than 20 million copies. I won't just say it. 
Yes. The songwriter released several hit singles, including the raunchy I Want Your Sex, with a provocative music video played extensively on MTV, just as the AIDS crisis worsened. Offstage, the singer and songwriter was arrested in 1998 for lewd conduct in a public restroom by an undercover police officer. Let's go out. Ugly Christmas sweaters get more popular every year, and now pets are even joining the party. As Michelle Macaluso reports, holiday events with pets are not just Instagram-worthy, they also support worthy causes. Tis the season to mix and mingle at ugly sweater parties, and some people can't resist making their pets participate. She's a family member, so I know we have our own ugly sweaters, so we buy one for her as well. This fundraiser for the Humane Rescue Alliance gave people a chance to put their pets in party outfits and support a worthy cause. Any opportunity I have to support any kind of charity, especially when it deals with animal shelters, I'm all about it. Melissa Gomes enjoys dressing up her rescue dog, Hershey, but he's not used to wearing a hat. So maybe he's feeling a little more kind because of the holiday season. <laughs> Some pet owners are willing to pay $20 for a photo of Fido with Santa. Dogs, cats, turtles, snakes. It's for a good cause. Gary Putnam has been been playing Santa for the Humane Society for 11 years. Kids don't pee on you as often, and uh, they don't drool on you as much. The rescues roaming Crumbs and Whiskers Cat Cafe in Washington are all dolled up in their holiday best. One of them cozied up to cat owner Emma Sanseri. A really pretty stripy kitty. Look at you. She wasn't ready to commit, but those ugly sweaters won over some who came to this Christmas soiree. Michelle Macaluso for CBS News, Washington.
All right, check this out. In Australia, Christmas is a beach holiday. Hundreds partying out in the sun, some dressed in Santa hats and all. All right. All right. Actually, uh, I happen to know somebody who went to Australia for Christmas, which I did not know was a thing. <laughs> if you're not in Oregon, you got to be in Australia. I think. Yeah, Gosh, yeah. The weather out there is. I mean, where else is right it now? warm though? Right here in the southeast, maybe. Yeah. Which is where actually yeah. where I'm also from. Southwest it's 80 degrees and Florida. My family's out in <laughs> on the beach for Christmas, and I'm over here. This is a good change for you. It's not, it's not you, that man. cold right now, so that's that's all right. But yeah. man, you go out east of the gorge, out to Hood River. It could get cold. And that snow's good. coming too, right? And we have snow on the way. So take a look at the seven day forecast. Tomorrow evening, I expect rain through the valley, snow through the gorge and cascades, maybe a couple inches on I 84. So be careful if you're going to be in that region. Tuesday, 46 degrees. We wrap up the year at 40, mostly cloudy, starting January off about the same as our December. All right, thank you, Joseph. Well, that's going to do it for us this Christmas Eve evening. Sorry. Thank you for having us as part of your holiday weekend. Good night.